Yeah. Team RWBY's Monster Menagerie is about to be complete. Ruby cheered. Menagerie. Impressive vocabulary, Ruby. Weiss praised her young leader. Yep. And especially because the new monster is going to the Princess of Menagerie. Excited, Your Highness? Young teased. Yang, cut it out. You know I don't like being treated like a princess. Blake said, blushing. Princess? Neo asked, leaping onto Blake's lap, laying up against her. Have I ever told you I was an activist for Faunus rights, too? She asked, clearly trying to earn brownie points. Blake's response was to simply push her off, causing her to land in Velvet's lap instead. I think it's probably going to take more than that, Neo. Especially since you work with Torchwick, who is very racist towards Faunus. Velvet told her. So, it's a fast cat, just like Blake. John said, trying to guess based on other monsters they'd heard of before. Is it Nargakuga? It looked rather cat-like. Para guessed. Correct, Para. I can see why she was one of Beacon's top students. Katana said. She is indeed. I consider all the students here, plus the rest of Team CFEY, to be the pride of Beacon. Ajpin declared. They've had varying levels of success, but they've since more than earned their spots here. Glinda agreed. Th thank you, professors. Ruby said blushing madly and tearing up a bit, along with the other students. Okay, very nice words, but now let's get on with it. Katana declared. A silver-haired hunter in little to no armor was seen in a jungle-like area as Rage spoke airily, accompanied by rather ominous music. Picture the scene, you're lost in the forest, split up from your group. The trees foreboding and ever so similar. The humidity choking, clawing at your throat. Your eyes scan the thick foliage, a shadow, maybe? A presence, a little flittering of movement? You can't be sure. It could be the days that you're in, the fear of never being found again. You step forward once more and... Rage verbally painted a horrifying picture, before the sound of a twig snapping was heard. Everyone jumped at the sudden noise, breaking the near silence, but had nothing else to say. A branch breaks underfoot. You pause just a moment. You notice then, in horror, silence has descended around you. You feel a presence. You can't see anything, but somehow you know it's there. You carefully creep forward, Dash Rage went on, hooking them and drawing them in more and more. Suddenly, some strange music played and the image of a boy was shown, see through to still see the hunter as he tried to find his way. Quiet. Quiet. The boy said, sinking with the music a bit. Just like Aura, how we can sense someone's there without seeing them. John noted, Pira nodding in pride. I'm having flashbacks to our initiation. Ren declared. I might like to hear the full version of that. Weiss said. It did have a nice beat to it. Cinder agreed. I think we're supposed to be more focused on the super creepy atmosphere and imagining something following us. Neo reminded them. 
hearing nothing. You get a feeling, you turn around and empty space greets you. But you're sure now. The hairs on the back of your neck standing on end. The fear bubbling up inside you like a geyser. You start to run, you start to sprint. Flailing through the undergrove, crashing into the trees. You turn around, taking a moment to look and dash. Rage declared as the foliage was focused on as a dark figure with glowing red eyes jumped out of it with a panther-like snarl, the glow of the eyes soon being all that was seen. Eek! Velvet squealed, leaping behind the couch and hiding behind it, although her bunny ears still poked up over it. Whoa! Easy, Vel. Coco called after her teammate. Ruby gently pet Velvet's ears. It's okay, Velvet. The scary monster's not gonna hurt you. Ruby told her. Velvet popped back up and slowly took her place on one of the beanbags, but moved it closer to Coco and leaned against her, her leader holding her close. It's perfect. Blake said, her eyes sparkling in what little she'd seen of it. Oh yes, my fellow hunters, meet Nargakuga. My joint second favorite monster. Rage explained as the panther-like creature they'd briefly seen in passing was now shown in all its glory as it roared from a large tree branch and leapt out to face the hunter. This, I guess, Panther Hawk Dragon is simply a marvel to behold and one of the few monsters that has a human form. Rage explained, as a clip from a movie was briefly shown charging into battle alongside an army of tribal warriors. He looks so cool. Nora cheered. Who was that? Ruby asked in awe. That was the Black Panther. You'll see him soon enough, he's the star of his own movie, and a star in several others we'll see in the future. Katana explained, shedding a small tear. 2. He seems like a pretty cool hero. Blake said, amazed, blushing a bit. Ah, do you want his kitties, Blake Y? Young teased leaning against the faunus princess. Blake pushed her back with a small pout. All right, so. Nargakuga, then, is technically a flying wyvern, though he takes the more grounded frame of Tigrex, where the front wings have evolved less for flying and more for walking, and that's just what they'll do one of these days. Those wing blades gonna slice on right through you. Rage sang as a palico in Burkidio's armor was seen taking on a Nargakuga as it dashed past the smaller feline several times, before an clip of Nargakuga was shown that made it look like it was bobbing its head to the music. Blades on its wings. Fascinating. Ironwood said in awe. And how they operate as both wing and leg. I wouldn't have thought something like that could function efficiently. Glinda noted. That likely means the wings are less developed than a flying wyverns like Astalos or Keizu. I would imagine it glides rather than actual flying. Penny deduced. Man, not even five minutes in and we've heard two catchy songs. Crow said bobbing with the music as well. So, to the nitty-gritty, then. Nargakuga is an apex predator and a finely honed one at that, perfect in its natural environment and entirely adapted to dominate it. Able to move almost silently through the undergrowth, not disturbing nary a rock, an ambush predator in the truest of sense. Relying on getting as close as possible, waiting, stalking, preparing for the right moment and then before